Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we are gonna be talking legal. But don't get don't don't tune out, don't check out. We are gonna be talking about something to help us in the legal realm. And this man, this brother, and his team and his co-founder. He's a CEO of a new app that is changing the absolute game and is going to help us do better when dealing with law enforcement. You won't want to miss one second of what he's sharing today on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey everyone, I have the CEO and co-founder of Attorney Shield, Inc. This man, Mr. David Walton, has been bringing the noise and changing lives and working in numerous fields, which one of my favorite is, two of my favorites, is IT services and financial services. He brings over 25 years in these various industries, including government. His diverse background includes roles at JP Morgan, Chase, LexisNexis, Fist, and teaching at Columbia College. This is a busy brother. And want to thank him for his service. He's a former army officer. He served his country and continues to serve long after. So this man is doing it an incredible guest. And I just want to welcome him on the Gentleman Style Podcast show today. And we're going to talk about how he and his team have created this app that is going to help us do better when dealing with law enforcement. So let's dive in. So help me welcome to the stage, the incredible Mr. David Walton. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank hey. you for joining us, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thanks for having me here. This is pretty cool. Absolutely. Thank you for making time for us. It is a, is a true honor, sir. Your resume is extensive, and I love it. <laughs> I love to see it, and I love that you are a man of many talents. You've touched numerous industries, IT, business, J.P. Morgan, all of it. And now we're full circle. You're, you're giving back. I see this as what you're doing is giving back. But I want to ask this first question. What got it started? Because you have an, an extensive career in numerous um, specialties. Why create a, this software, this app, when you, you have an incredible mind? You could do anything. Why, why this? Can I ask it? Yes, you can certainly ask that. And it, it's, it's actually a really good question. Um, uh, you know, I think that most people are aware, I don't care who you are, that there's a policing problem in the United States. And the individuals who appear to bear the brunt of that are younger individuals and, you know, those with black and brown skin. And, uh, and so every time you see a situation on TV, you ask yourself, you know, what could have been done? You know what could have prevented this tragedy um it, is there a better way and so um that doesn't hit home until you see it in real time in real life and so my business partner and i also own another company called true intel and uh it's a consulting business mostly for sales uh, enablement and sales practice but we were on our way to a um conference uh at the airport um uh we're heading up to new york and um there's a gentleman in the terminal and he's upset and he gets a telephone call. You can tell he's upset. He's sitting across from us. Tell he's upset, gets another call, starts crying. And you, we gathered over time of hearing all the stuff that was said that his father was sick and had just passed. And when he went to board the flight, um, the gate agent was like, no, you can't get on the plane because you're too upset. Right. And it's like, I've never heard of such a thing, but yeah, right. Uh, and so uh, he proceeded to insist that he needed to be there for his mother and his sister, uh, right? His surviving family, and he needed to get there. And they were like, you're not getting on this plane. He's like, I bought a ticket. And so they call airport security on him. Airport security rolls up, uh, says, sir, are you coming with us? He goes, no, I'm getting on that plane. And without hesitation, they just whipped out a taser, tased this guy, dropped him on his face, busted his nose zip tied him put him in a wheelchair and carted him out of there and i thought you know that guy's life is irrevocably changed 
right? It, the, the, he's going to have an arrest record. And all he was trying to do is get to his family. And is there a better way? Where was the sympathy? Where was the, the empathy for this guy's situation? And Bug, me and Andy, the, ent- the entire time up on this trip. And so when we finished the conference that we were at, uh, we went and found a, a, you know, sort of a local pub uh, next to ja- or just a few blocks away from Javits Center. And we mapped this thing out and we're like, well, if we don't do it, nobody else is gonna. And we may be able to make a little money in the process as, as you know, we build a business that's about really helping people versus a business that exploits and takes advantage of people. And that's how this thing got started, Marcus. You said something. And Gentleman Style Podcast, the mascot is not okay with that. That's not cool that that airline did him like that. That's a huge no-no. And you are speaking to something that's unique, right? When you're in the system, because I've read books on this, like it's it's crucial for our young men at, at all possible, and young women, anybody. But it's crucial to avoid getting in the, the legal system as much as possible. That's right. And that's right. Like you, you said something, you said that, that now he's in the system. Now he has a record simply because he wanted to be with his family during their deepest, darkest, probably moment of time of need. And they were denied that due to a lack of empathy and understanding and concern and customer service. I mean, all (laughs) All of that. Yes, absolutely. So you are speaking to that and that's, that's the heart. And that's, I was hoping you'd say that and you did. And I love it because <laughs> we can talk about of, that because it's a big deal. It really is a big deal. Yeah. Cause that was one incident, but this is happening globally. all over the place. Right. And, and l- l- yeah, you know, we should probably get a sense of the scale of that because I'm, I'm, I'm a guy, I work for Lexus Nexus. So I'm a guy of the numbers. So I'm all about the numbers, right? You can feel however you want, but the numbers are the numbers. They have no feeling. They're just facts. Right. And so, you know, I can feel that policing is fine, but when you look at the numbers, it ain't right. And so, uh, uh, you know, what most people don't know is that, you know, uh, one third of adults in the United States have been arrested. They have an arrest record. Right. And you stop and think about that. And now a lot of people also don't know that the United States ranks fourth in the world. Uh, in terms of incarcerations, right? We, we love to incarcerate our people for whatever reason, right? You know, we've got, you know, over 300,000 federal laws on the books and each state has an average of 46,000 laws uh, or statutes as we call them, right? And it's hard to know even when you're breaking the law, let alone most people get arrested for things that really aren't even harmful. Normal behavior these days is criminalized, right? If my kid you know, wants to open up a, a, a lemonade stand right on the street there, you know, if she doesn't have a permit, she's breaking the law. Right. What's up with that, right? right? If I want to go fishing without a license because I want to feed my family, I'm breaking the law. When did when did it become illegal to fish, right? right. And so at the end of the day, most people don't realize that we are one, a, a, a country of way too many laws, uh, uh, criminal codes, if you will, way too many of them. And then we're also a country where the law enforcement agencies are willing participants in sort of a commercialized prison system, right? And and I know I'm bouncing across a, a number of points, but this problem is a highly complex problem. Uh, but at the end of the day, police departments are rated uh, uh, based on the number of arrests or DUIs they make. Uh, they're not rated on convictions, right? And so uh, officers have a broad range of discretion when dealing with people. And if they believe you're intoxicated, even though you're blowing zero, uh, they can still arrest you. And that happens. That's happening here in my county right now, right? I, I've, I've already met several people who blew zero. There's a class action lawsuit, by the way, against Sheriff Harwick here uh, because they're arresting people who blow below the limit, but they're but but they don't care, right? This is all about the numbers. This isn't about sort of convictions on the back end. They don't care what happens to you on the back end. They only care about the numbers that make them look good. And so I'm going to sort of stop there and let you sort of unpack that a little bit. But this problem is huge. It's widespread. Uh, and we won't get into those situations where the smaller towns in flyover states in America have police departments that rule their communities. Uh, and uh, uh, burdensomely prey on them uh, because they don't have tax collection. They have fines and fees and court fines, right? So I'll stop there too. (laughs) 
No, 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 this is this is this is the, he's the grand poobah, right? This is a grand poobah. This is level high level knowledge and insight and wisdom, which is why it, I think, Mr. Walton, you and your partner are the, the men that needed to do this. Like you were put strategically throughout the course of your experience in your life to 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 do this. Right. There's very few people that in their lifetime discover the date. You know, two things, the day you were born and why, why? And you, you are doing your why. Yeah, you're right? speaking it, brother. You are. That's huge. That's huge. You are. And, and you know what? A, an attorney yeah. would have never done this. I'm not an attorney. Right. Uh, but an attorney would have never done this for a number of reasons. This is a highly uh, complex and regulatory uh, burdensome business. Right. And so uh, you almost have to proceed not knowing how tough it is. Right. 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 And uh, an attorney would have known that and been like, nah, I'm going to just focus on my practice and let let the system stay the way the system is, because by and large, it benefits me. But we have to do something different. And um, I don't believe, I believe we are doing something different. And I don't think that's the end of doing something different. I think there's more different beyond that, right? Uh, we, ho we, we hope and uh, intend on sort of disrupting the way policing works, but also the way the legal system works, because it's highly inaccessible and unaffordable. It, that's true, and it and you you said you said it earlier. There's a high level of incarceration, but that high level of incarceration is due to the fact that there's a high level of 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 lack of understanding. We don't know our rights. We don't know what we're what, what we're entitled to. We don't know how to defend ourselves. We don't know how to protect ourselves and what alienable rights because we're over um, statute. We're over statute. <laughs> we, 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 we are. We are. So, and if you think about it, you know, you hear that sort of uh, school to prison pipeline trope, right? And part of it's true because, you know, young people are some of the hardest to watch targets, right? And so just here in Florida uh, in 2024, I believe, no, 2023, or is it 2022? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but in that one particular year, uh, with, and I think it was 2022, there were th over 300 elementary school arrests here in the state, mostly uh, children with, um, uh, you know, developmental issues, uh, autism and other, you know, ADHD, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, in the past, when I was a kid, you know, the administrators dealt with that, you know, through, through non, you know, law enforcement means. But what I know is if you put a cop you put a police officer in a school, people are going to start get arrested. Get it? They're going to start getting arrested. Yep. If the police weren't there, there would they wouldn't be arresting kids. But you put a put a police anywhere, people are going to start getting arrested for whatever. That's just the way it works. And so now we're arresting our kids. Yeah, because just like you said, there's numbers, there's dollar <laughs> amounts, there's numbers behind all of this, right? So they, they put the police there to say, hey, we're going to help this community. We're going to lower the crime rate. But now you put quotas on these police officers to justify the cost of them being there um, for the local government. So the government is saying, OK, well, we put you here now go to work and you need to have these many tickets, these many arrests. We want to see the the systems, prisons, um, because prison and jails is is, is a business and it's it makes business. money. Mm -hmm. So I need you, I need your police force to fill these prisons. So you better be writing tickets. You better be incarcerating people. I need to make my money back. And right. It's, yeah. it's, it's all synced in there. It, it, it it's it, you know the deal is is that you know there's going to be somebody who says oh you guys are like conspiracy talking and i don't think it's a conspiracy i just think it's a culture right it's 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 where our values are as a nation right if our values were protecting our kids we wouldn't be arresting our kids if our values were protecting families and keeping them together we wouldn't be arresting you know uh you know young black males for stupid stuff right and breaking up the, and ruining their families in the process this speaks this is a values problem this isn't like a conspiracy thing but you're absolutely on target the police i call them un, 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 unwittingly helping sort of the corporate interest who are, have invested in prisons right um and it's unfortunate right and and, and but there's just too many things that are wrong that sort of you know, gets people sort of tumbled into that legal uh, space. And so once you end up with a criminal record, your your likelihood of being arrested again, you know, goes up considerably. 
that second arrest, if you actually spend time in jail, that probability in your future goes up even more. What starts going down is your ability to make decent money, right? Uh, and that's the unfortunate side of this is that as soon as you have a an arrest record, right, uh, and, a, and especially a criminal conviction, um, that begins to affect your ability to join the military. That begins to affect your ability to go work for the bank or work for any type of financial institution, this, that, and the other. And if you're barred from those fairly reasonably or high paying jobs, what do you got left? Right. Uh, and, and a highly intelligent person who makes one mistake can ruin their financial, you know, upside, uh, considerably. And frankly, that's not fair because most of those mistakes are made when people are young and they don't really think things through and should be penalized for the rest of your life for that. Well, in America, that's our values and you're going to be. Facts. Facts. Huge. I told you. I told you. <laughs> huh. I, I work hard, y'all. I work hard <laughs> to get you guys quality 4k high level thinking guests like mr walton on the gentleman style podcast show he is speaking absolute tracks and what i appreciate what you and your your co-founder your partner did is you all didn't say hey let's let's attack capitol hill let's <laughs> elect p political leaders you all started at knowledge you all said i need to arm people with the knowledge right because <laughs> and it's true, right? Because everybody's like, we need, let's, let's vote for this person. Let's vote for that person. No, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. need to arm people with knowledge. You yeah. need to have at the palm of your hand, legal advice <laughs> right here, right now. So you know what to do. Right. So um, you guys are hitting the nail on the head we, and, we and, are. and solving the problem. We are. And there's a reason for that. So Andy's background is, uh, you know, uh, public uh, and government policy. He, he has a background in that. And so we know how the government and politics works and what, what really motivates politicians at the end of the day. It's, it's, an, it's an area that we used to actually sell into when I worked for Lexus and he worked at Navian. Uh, and so with that in mind, we understand sort of how that whole whole mess of a world works. And it's it, good luck, right? Because, you know, from a p political perspective, unless you, you're a special interest group with a lot of money or you're a corporation with a lot of money, you're not going to get much attention. And petitions don't work anymore. That's sort of grandpa's, you know, technique. But those things don't hardly work anymore. And so with that in mind, going after politicians is a mistake because there's yeah. this whole perception issue that if you go after the problem, which are police, uh, in many respects, or the way policing worked. It's not necessarily the police. It's just the way that their policies, it's their tactics, it's all of that stuff. And that's not the fault of the average police officer. That's the fault of the leadership. It's the fault of the system itself. And if they go after the system and try and reform the system, they look like they're going after police. And that's not a politically expedient thing to do. And you're probably not going to get reelected because your, your opponent's going to call you out on that. And you're going to have to backpedal and defend. You know how those guys work, right? Yep. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's the wrong place to go. And what I always believe is your government's not going to come save you. That's not what the, yeah, they say that they're here to nice. help. Well, they've never helped me, right? Uh, so, you know, the deal is if you got a problem, you got to be a self solver, right? Now, here's the deal there's solutions out there that, you know, guys like me are putting together. And so, if you need a, a, if you need a ride from point A to point B, guess what? There's an Uber now. You don't have to get into some slimy cab, right? Uh, and, and so today, you didn't have the ability to access on demand a uh, barred and licensed attorney to help you through sort of a police stop or a domestic situation where they showed up. Well, now you do. And so there's kind of no excuse, right? Like if you go to jail now, you're going to jail because you were maybe negligent in preparing yourself. And that negligence takes on two, two things, right? One, either get to know your rights so that you don't become a, you know, the state's witness against your own criminal activity or alleged criminal activity, right? And that means shutting your mouth, 
right? A lot of people don't know. You need to just shut your mouth and you don't have to talk to an officer and they'll chorus you by, oh, this is going to, you know, if you just give me a, if you just talk to me, this thing will be done in five minutes, right? Well, that's, that's a lie. They're, they're looking for you to incriminate yourself. How fast were you going? Where are you going to, you know, as soon as you start answering how you, how fast you think you were going. And if, even if you say, I don't know, then that gives him license to basically tell the court how fast you were going and you're on record for not knowing and so he has better credibility than you and that ticket is sticking and you're paying those fines right so these either educate yourself on how to engage or bring in an expert to help you engage because that's your best chance for the most favorable outcome anything less than that you're putting you know your frankly your 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 life at risk and and when i say life i don't always i don't always mean like you're going to die some of them do we know this you know tyree nichols you know uh michael brown a number of these guys have died you know george floyd right but your life also means your livelihood right are you going to make yep. it home that night or are you going to be arrested because you made a fatal flaw Right. And once you're arrested, how does that impact you and your family for the rest of your life? These are things you got to think about, because if you don't, if you just go all, all in, go around happenstance. Right. You know, you may get lucky for the rest of your life, but you may not. So, right. <laughs> yeah. This is good. Ignorance. You cannot. That's what he's talking about, y'all. You can the ignorance card does not work ignorance does not work it's too many times well i don't know officer i don't know i don't know how fast i was going i didn't know i, I couldn't kill that dog it was you know you, all these things are ignorance based and right. so we have to become knowledgeable fix yourselves he said it earlier fix yourselves you can't control law enforcement you can't control congress you can't control your elected officials you can control you by arming yourself with knowledge data information and your alienable rights and Absolutely. it's as simple as that do it yourself do it yourself Absolutely. but that's that's the hard part right people don't want to do the work themselves it is it's an effort and it's it's a proactive behavior and proactive behavior is kind of tough because um i won't get into the psychology of it all but i put stuff off too i get it right and and you know it's a thing right but you know, at the end of the day, you got to also prioritize what's important and you've got to be looking out for yourself and the people that you care about. And that means you better stand up and you better figure it out. And because uh, if you don't, somebody's going to either take advantage of you or it will be figured out on your behalf. And so, you know, at the end of the day, if there are tools that are going to help you and your family or if there's some type of education you can acquire that are going to help you and your family sort of either ward off a potential threat or otherwise like people second amendment people i love these these guys because they have guns in their homes because of, effectively the primary reason why a person buys a weapon a gun is for self-defense right uh they want to protect themselves and their family and that's a proactive move and it's commendable and it's absolutely lawful uh, but, you know, uh, look at the gentleman out of um, uh, the panhandle of Florida who owned a gun for that very same reason. Cop knocks on his door. He opens it with the gun down by his side and he gets blasted in the chest twice and dies. Right. And so to me, that cop's being indicted right now. He's already been arrested and he'll have to you know, sort of stand trial for his his behavior and his mistake. Right. But at the end of the day, at least that gentleman was was preparing in a way that um that unfortunately resulted in his death but that death was not his fault so the deal is is if you whip out attorney shield and you're trying to protect your rights and a police officer doesn't like that and it feels like you're questioning their their authority and they somehow escalate the situation unnecessarily that's not your fault but guess what? We'll have video of that. And there may be remedies on the back end of that if they don't straight out kill you. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you have to put mechanisms in place that are going to protect you and, and result in the best outcome for you and your families. And you can't be afraid of the downsides of those because there's a lot of people who don't want to buy a weapon because they're afraid that they're going to be judged by police. Well, we're a Second Amendment nation. If the police see me with a gun slung over my shoulder, they should just keep walking by. They, they, it should be a, nobody's business, right? But it is because, you know, at the end of the day, police view everybody as a suspect, right? And so Google this all day long, but 
think about how police are trained in the academy. From the beginning, they're they're trained that any individual they count encounter is a uh, uh, is a lethal force threat in the making. Right. Uh, some rough language around that, but uh, basically a lethal force uh, and potentially hazardous situation in the making. And so they approach everybody with that content. Everybody's a suspect. When police come and ask you a question, it's not that they're looking for directions or they they do want to be your buddy. They're investigating you if they're at or they're investigating somebody else. And if you answer that wrong, you may get be pulled into the investigation, too. I'm not saying don't speak to police officers. I'm just saying don't do it unless your attorney says it's OK to do so and understand what it is you should say and shouldn't say, because you may think you're smart. But guess what? The police have decades of techniques of how how to, you know, uh, you know, entrap people or how to, you know, sort of get them to admit. Uh, guilt, right? And um, uh, you, you, you just, you just came off the block today, right? And so, <laughs> at the end of the day, these guys know what they're doing, and you have what all we're trying to do at Attorney Shield is rebalance the power dynamic between the public and the police, because the police have militarized equipment, they have all the weapons, they have the non-lethal weapons, they have the car with the big engine, and you're not gonna if you're breaking the law, you should go to jail, right? But you shouldn't be helping yourself go to jail because you didn't shut your mouth, right? You know, the deal is, is everybody here in America is supposedly or ostensibly innocent until proven guilty. Well, you know, don't, don't, don't accelerate that for yourself. Uh, get an attorney, know what to say, be prepared in the story. When I saw the attorney shield, logo and the brand and what you are on mission to do. It took me back to um, a little bit past your story that you just shared about, about um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the laws and stipulations for landlords around that and how many landlords had no idea, including myself, had no idea that what, what like the government can tell me to keep these people <laughs> in my home, despite not paying their rent, despite, you know, not, um, keeping my place up to par and I still have to maintain the home and I still have to maintain the yard and I can't put them out and they, I, I can't displace these people because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that was a shocker for the whole world. And it, it, it shows again, even at that level where you're a real estate investor, you think you know it all. And then here comes the government saying, nope, you don't really, you, you can't, we won't allow you to do that. <laughs> and when history has shown us otherwise, and and I remember the situation in New York with a young lady. She had squatters. She had squatters. Just right. something something basic as that. We don't know our squatter laws. We don't even know our squatter laws. <laughs> right? right. And and these are these are professional squatters who know the law, know what they're entitled to per their state, and can yeah. stay for months past yeah. when they should have been gone. And that's what attorney shield. When I saw it, it that that instantly like, oh, shield protection. I need protection. I need to arm myself with protection against professionals. These are professionals. Yeah, the police are professionals. Uh, now, that doesn't mean they always behave professionally, right? right. But they're trained professionally. Uh, now, in certain cases, some, some of the minimum training for police is less than that of a cosmetologist, just to be honest, right? right. Uh, but if, you're, if you've probably got sergeant stripes on, you, on your arm, you've probably been in that department for at least five years and you have gone through training. And so at the end of the day, you have every opportunity to be a professional police officer, but police officers are human as well. You know, they get the feelings hurt, they get up in their, their emotions just like anybody. And we have a thing that we call um, sort of the downside of self-advocacy. Uh, meaning if you're self-advocating for yourself, and this is why attorney shield also becomes really important. If you're self-advocating, well, officer, I don't want to answer your questions or no, I, you're not going to search my car. That in many respects is, a, is, is viewed. It's not a challenge of their authority. It's viewed as a challenge of their authority and they will escalate on you in the heartbeat and you become the center of their ire. And so with that in mind, Put an attorney in between you and that officer. Our, you know, the the legal first responders who work for Attorney Shield or work with Attorney Shield uh, will speak to that officer and talk to that officer on your behalf, right? Uh, and if they're the ones saying you're not going to search my client's home or you're not going to search their car, that 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 sort of uh, rebuffment is coming from the attorney. It's not coming from you, but it, but they are your representation. And so 
we've got you know a few videos that have made their way out onto uh, social media where we sort of show that where the attorney saying you can't search my client's house, it, 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 you'd be breaking the law, and you know the the police officers back down, but they didn't get mad at the individual whose house they wanted to search and they couldn't reach through the phone and choke the attorney. So <laughs> at the end of the day, it creates sort of this buffer, right? But it creates a professional buffer too, because also what we notice, Marcus, is that the police officers that engage in our videos, we haven't really, we haven't, we've had some behave annoyed at the fact that the person has an attorney on the phone, but never really? unprofessional. I'm not kidding you. And one, I'll just describe a quick story. One of the first videos uh, that we were able to, one of the first service requests we had was a young gentleman who was getting arrested on Vanderbilt campus. So campus police had a, was arresting him for uh, criminal trespass, right? Uh, he was a former student. And I don't know what happened before that, but he was being arrested. So he dialed in at the point of his arrest and this police officer, you know, a white old dude, and this kid's a black kid with a afro right the police officer was so patient in allowing this guy to speak to the attorney at one point saying ma'am can you explain to him what criminal trespass means you know and so there was this patience and consideration given to the situation versus this rush flusteredness that typically es escalates the situation right and it was so considerate. This officer was so considerate to such point when as he's walking this kid out after he handcuffs him right? He's holding the, 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 the kid's phone with the attorney still on it. And, you know, the footage shows the police officer holding the phone up to the kid to still talk to the attorney. And then when he puts him in the patrol vehicle, he lays the phone in his lap. And who gets that treatment without an attorney, right? right. So, right. Uh, and so I, what I do know is yeah. that that would have been a much more, um, Severe. Uh, you know, a severe situation or a less, uh, less, less what, what, we, what we call a collaborative situation if an attorney wasn't involved. That's what I believe. That's true. That's real. I'll take that. I'll take that <laughs> all day. All day. We are going to dive into the soup and the sauce of Attorney Shield right after. We got to pay some bills before our attorneys get it. No, I'm just kidding. We got to pay some bills. We will be right back. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. We are back to the Jim Missile Podcast show, and we have the incredible Mr. David Walton. This man is spilling so many nuggets. We just dove in to the mindset and the heart and the 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 the, the, the reason and the story behind this this app and this software that they've developed and created for us, Attorney Shield, protecting us and keeping us safe. And if you missed that, scroll back, go back, check it out. We are on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Ghana, Radio.com, Audible, Facebook, Facebook Business Page, LinkedIn, and even Audible. Wherever you get your podcast, Mr. Walton is there. Spilling the tea today on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Huge, huge thing. Huge. Phenomenal. Sir, I want to get into the sauce. 
I want to get into the nuggets and the, the mindset. What? How does Attorney Shield help? During, you gave a great example, but specifically, can you give specifics on how does Attorney Shield help during police stops, detainments, and dealing with law enforcement? Am I supposed to whip it out as soon as I get pulled over? Am I do or do I wait until the officer starts talking to me? Can Can you help me there? Help us. That's, there. A, that's a really good question. Um, and I, what we tell our members is. As soon as you know that you're being stopped by police or police are rolling up your driveway or they are uh, intent on contacting you or have contacted you uh, and you could even be a pedestrian on the street where a cop stops his car and rolls and walks up to you. If you know that's happening, get your phone out, open the app and hit the button right? Because time is of the essence, right? And, you know, we, we, you know, our attorneys are staffed 24-7, 365. And so this isn't some, you know, referral service out to an existing law firm that's looking to get your business. And matter of fact, we can't take any business beyond helping you in that time utility moment, right? And so there's no other incentive for us other than, you know, your member fees, are associated with us being able to staff attorneys so that they're available and those attorneys work on attorney shield they're not sort of you know working on cases because we don't have any cases right uh Mm -hmm. and so at the end of the day hit the button and the attorney will come on they'll assess your situation right it's important that you take a moment to allow that situation to be assessed because we drop these attorneys almost like paratroopers into a DZ where they don't know what they're going to get, right? We don't know whether this is a cop coming after you for a speeding ticket or drug possession, right? And so with that in mind, that triage is important, right? And so be sure that you're very clear, but do it in a calm way because we don't want to agitate or give the police officer a reason to want to invoke officer safety and put you in handcuffs, right? That's not what we want, right? And putting you in handcuffs doesn't necessarily mean you're arrested, but if they believe that they're not safe or if they can justify that decision to put you in handcuffs, they'll do it all day long. So hit the button, get your attorney on as quickly as possible, because once that attorney is there, all of this, the negative stuff that happens when people are trying to self-advocate become a much lower probability. Now, there are situations where guess what? We can't save you, right? Uh, But we can make it better, right? Meaning that kid at Vanderbilt that got arrested, I believe he avoided a resisting arrest because he was upset. You can see it in his chest, right? His breathing, right? And the attorney was like, well, just be sure you don't make any sudden movements. Be sure to cooperate. You know, look, we've already notified your emergency contact, uh, the one that's on record on your account. And so somebody will know where you're at. Uh, and know where you're going. Um, and that seemed to calm that gentleman down. And then we had another situation. This one actually happened last night where a gentleman was being evicted. You you brought up the tenancy thing, but he was mm. actually being, he wasn't being evicted. He was being asked to leave. And so his mother lived at a particular residence, but the owner of the residence where the mother was renting had problems with her son. And her son was basically, the the the, the landlord got a restraining order uh, or no trespass notice uh, put in place. And so when he came back, the te- the landlord called the cop. And so, you know, what the attorney had to explain is despite your mother, your, your right to come visit your mother, right? She can walk outside versus you going in because that's not her property at the end of the day. And if you do step off the sidewalk into the yard, the police are already saying they don't want to arrest you. They were super professional, by the way. The police officers were just, and this is what we see is these officers really sort of bring their best game and that's what we want, right? And they were super nice and super professional and super patient, right? Uh, But this guy was not being reasonable, right? And so he ended up hanging up on the attorney because the attorney didn't give him an answer that allowed him to walk into the house. And you know what? We can't fix that, right? right? First off, all we can do is provide our members the information and the support that we can provide, uh, you know, having attorneys on deck, right? At the end of the day, what happens in that moment is up to you, right? And so if you ignore that information and you get arrested, that's on you. If you keep talking when we tell you to be quiet, right, in which that happens all the time, some people just <laughs> shut up, right? And it's like, I, you, know, you see it and you're like, be quiet, don't, yeah. And and the attorney's kind of saying, ma'am, sir, you know, d- d- just quit talking, calm down, you know, whatever. And they keep talking. We can't fix that. Right. And so 
I think something people have to do too is they have to be responsible for their own actions. So just like we're saying, be proactive and make sure that you, you're either aware of your rights or you have access to an attorney to help you out with those in those situations. Once that happens and you're in that situation, you also have to be responsible for your own behavior because if you're acting erratic or whatever, and that you you give the police a reason to put you in handcuffs because of officer safety, that's kind of on you. And so we can tell you all the best practices, 10 and 2 and all that stuff, no quick movements, whatever. But at the end of the day, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to de-escalate the situation on both sides and create an environment of collaboration, but one also where your rights are protected and you don't inadvertently become your own state's witness at the end of the day. That's what came to mind for me. De-escalation, right? This is not a get out of jail free card, literally. Mm -hmm. This is a de-escalation. We want to arm you with the knowledge and tools, even if it's a, against your best wishes, right? You may not want to, you may want to still enter the house, but they're here to protect you. You're not going to come. And, and for the protection of all of this, right? My, my guests on the show, this is not someone that's going to tell you to do something illegal. This is someone that's right. who's going to advise you on what the outcome could be and, and what the best course of action is legally to keep everything calm and above board and above reproach. It's not a guarantee. Like, hey, you guys didn't get me out of that ticket. You said, no, we never said. You notice what he said. He's, he never said, we're going to get you out of this infraction or this incident, especially if, because the part of legal counsel is you could be wrong. Right? Yeah, you can, you, yeah, exactly. You can still be wrong. You're not imperfect. You're not impervious. Right. They may come on and say, yeah, you need to get in that cop car, just like the, the young man at the college dorm. Yeah. Or in this yeah. case, last night, you need to stay out of that house because you have yeah. the, everything is, is above board. The landlord did what he was supposed to do. The law enforcement officer the, is doing what they're supposed to do. I need you to not enter that house. Yeah. Simple. Simple. And, and if you do, if you don't listen, that's on you. But it's on you, right? It's, they've done the work. Powerful, yeah, they, powerful, powerful. I, yeah. I, you, you activated something that, that triggered me, and I want to dig a little bit deeper. What things are happening in, in it? Because you said, I hit the button, it starts working to call someone on that 24 hour line. But you also mentioned a, another key feature that it's in notifying uh, my, my emergency contacts. What other mechanisms are happening when I hit that button? And my GPS location being picked, uh... my emergency. <laughs> Because this is all about safety, right? It so is all what, about safety. What, right? what other things are happening in the background here? Yeah, so there is a uh, an emergency contact, right? And so you can actually add two to the app, right? And it, and you can so when you add their first name, last name, and their email address and their mobile number, you can also then toggle to say, okay, how do you want to notify this person? Email or SMS text. We recommend SMS text because people are more <laughs> likely to read their texts than they are their emails, right? Uh, and that 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 text that comes in will basically notify. And we're careful about the message. We say we basically say in that message, you know, uh, you know, Marcus is 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 has requested legal support from Attorney Shield. You know, uh, please do not call him or try and text him right now. Give him time for give the attorney time to work through the situation. And it comes with a little link at the uh, link at the end, and that link is a geolocation link. As soon as you tap on it, it'll put you into Google Maps and show you exactly where that button was pushed, so you know where your loved one is. And to me, this is an excellent parental feature. To be honest, you know, yeah. uh, you know, our family uh, plan. So we have individual plans, but we also have family plans that come sort of at a discount for bundling your family together, right? Uh, it comes with a minimum of, of three, but you can get up to five. That represents about, it represents just over a third of, of the member accounts that we have active right now, right? And it's been a popular feature because parents are concerned about their kids, especially if they're new drivers or if they're going off to college, like this is college season now, we just send our kids back to school. And so, sure. you know, the deal is, is if something pops off, do you want to know about it? If they get arrested, you know, the app doesn't know that they got arrested. But once the attorney knows that the officers are going to arrest you, they pass that. Once you give the uh, attorney permission to notify your loved ones of that arrest, the attorney will notify support and support will directly reach out to that emergency contact via email, via text and with a telephone call. Right. Because we want to make sure nobody somebody knows where you are. Right. Uh, and there are some other 
you know, bells and whistles we're doing, uh, you know, with the app, uh, both now and in the future. But the whole idea is baked around creating transparency. And so that transparency is about the fact that you're not just FaceTiming with an attorney. We're recording the entire interaction, right? And that interaction is stored in our secure uh, uh, servers, right? Um, and we host on AWS in case you're curious for the tech geeks out there, right? Um, so we're, we're pretty <laughs> safe, right? Uh, and But we, we everything's hosted in S3 buckets out on the, uh, out on the AWS. And th the access to those is extremely limited and and it's because there's some attorney client privilege that may be in those conversations and so we've had situations where and and i appreciate the officers who did this but the attorney will say officer do you mind if i talk to my client privately and the officer will generally say yes we found that this will happen Ooh. and so in in these situations it's like okay what's in the purse right it, are there drugs in the purse or what are they going to find in the trunk or this type of stuff? Because the attorney needs to know what they should say and what they can't, what they shouldn't say. Now we don't have, the attorney does not have an obligation to tell the officer there's drugs in the purse, but they do have an obligation to inform the client what the repercussions of that are. And they do have the ability to deny a search, but if the officers want to go get a search warrant, they can confiscate the purse, not search it, put it in a locker at the police department while they wait on the search warrant. These are all things that people don't know about that an attorney is going to help you through. And all. But again, what, what we know is we want that situation recorded for the primary reason that um, if, if that officer in any way violates your constitutional rights in that interaction, that there's evidence of that happening. And that gives you the ability to request that footage from us uh, in a composited manner. And what I mean by composite, it's we just do a picture in picture composite of you and the attorney talking. And you can turn that over to a civil rights attorney, let them determine whether you got a case, but that's your evidence, right? And so the deal is, is this is about sort of capturing the truth that occurred versus he said, she, she said. And what we know is that police reports are very often embellished or falsified altogether. And so you want uh, your own version of the truth from your perspective, because police implemented body cams as a, uh, um, a response to people having smartphones. A lot of times people think that police did the body cam because, oh, they wanted a no, they wanted their perspective because what they what they found is when, when they went to court and they didn't have cam picture and the the and the citizen did, they generally lost their settlement. So they or they lost their judgments. They, so they wanted to provide their own perspective. The only problem with that is that you got to FOIA request those and they'll they'll block you. And, and, and a lot of the times there's very little recourse if they don't give you that footage and the time they don't give it to you is whenever it's incriminating right and so you want your own source of truth that's accessible to you and so that's again a major uh feature of the app so the, the app is recording um my the phone call the interaction between me yeah. and the the legal professional right 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 and so uh, we get we get both both perspectives we see the attorney we get the attorney channel and the channel from your phone and it's also it, it's also doing video as well. Yeah, we're recording the video. Yeah, it's wow. video audio recording. And so, uh, if you um, if you go out to like lackluster uh, media, uh, lackluster media on YouTube, uh, he probably a lot of our members are are very uh, are fans of that channel. And when we send them their footage, they generally share it with lackluster to sort of evaluate and talk about right. But there's videos out on lackluster that basically shows the footage of how attorney shield worked from the member's perspective. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, we just think that it, more cameras are better than, you know, more, uh, the more cameras you have, the more eyes you have on the situation, the better is what we think. Absolutely. I, I, this is, this is epic. This is epic. <laughs> this is absolutely what, th this is what we were looking for. Can, Attorney Shield helped me in a situation when dealing with animal, um, animal fishing, legal laws, real estate. Can it help me with CPS? <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, I, that's a really good question. I'm so glad you asked that. We don't market this on the website because we don't we don't want to appear to be anti CPS, right? <laughs> right. But 
if CPS shows up at your house, whether they're with or without cops, we view that as some type of enforcement action and you should hit the button. All right. Mm. If you're fishing in the wildlife game, guys, the game warden comes up, that's a law enforcement officer hit the button. Right. What we can't help you out with is if you've got a dispute with your neighbor, your landlord, your boss. Uh, I'm not saying we won't ever do these things, but if the police haven't been called and it, there's no police in, uh, police initiated contact, that is outside of the scope at this time. Right. Because we view police initiated contact as an emergency legal service. Right. Meaning the police aren't going to wait until Monday for you to have an appointment with your attorney in order to give you the ticket later. Right. You need Thanks. them now. Right. But if you've got a dispute with your tenant or you've got a dispute with your landlord or if you've got a dispute with your boss, that may be something that you can schedule later, schedule an hour consultation mm -hmm. that evening. Right. To right. talk about it. Right. While the, the thoughts are contemporaneous in your head, because other legal services make you set up an appointment two weeks later. And by then you've already lost interest and forgotten half of what happened. Right. And all. But it's not emergency. And so you but we want it to happen real quick and we want it to be affordable. So those are future things that we we will we will likely do with Attorney Shield and, and that will sit outside of the police initiated contact scope. But uh, again, it. The, CPS would be included. <laughs> love it. Love it. That's th this because law enforcement, just like you said, these are emergency um, interactions. This is not something that can be postponed for later. So just like you said, keep it simple, y'all. If law enforcement, some kind of law enforcement, whether it be the game warden, the, the boat warden out to sea, if you're out there fishing, if That's it's true. not law, those are all law enforcement. <laughs> those are all law enforcement. If, if, if the if FBI, wants to, if they want to board your boat, right, that's law enforcement. Hit the button. If you get a yeah. signal. <laughs> yeah. 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 All this is signal dependent out there. Right. Right. You have various plans on the website. Right. Help us out. Help me out. I, I want you to talk about the top tier plan because you ob obviously everything is downhill from the top tier plan. So I just want you to focus on <laughs> what are the perks and benefits with the top tier plan on your website. And we're showing this on the screen for our audio listeners. I'm sorry. You got to watch the live. <laughs> you got to watch it live to get yeah. this. But so, what is your, your top tier plan? What can we expect? What are the benefits? So if you notice, the the plans are based on uh, your, your member period. It's not really every one of those will get you the same. E we want to treat everybody equal, right? So right. every one of those will get you the service uh, that, you know, uh, all day long, the full service. But uh, when you're looking at the, the left side of it where the pricing is cheaper, that's just a month to month cost. And so it's for people who don't want to make a long term commitment. And then in the middle is a semi annual cost. And there's some savings baked in there based on you making a longer term commitment. And then even the the annual plan uh, uh, integrates a little bit more savings because you're basically committing for a slightly longer period of time. And so at the end of the day, the only difference between the plans on the right and left is your 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 commitment, right? Uh, your long term commitment. Now, the top and the bottom, one is an individual plan. The other one is a family plan. And so individuals, if it's just you you know, pay your 14 bucks and go month to month and you're covered, right? But if it's you and your family, say you've got adult kids or even kids in middle school for crying out loud, because one, one allowed, uh, uh, another allowed, but not advertised, um, you know, uh, 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 qualification to hit the button is if your administrators, let's say your principal or whoever, they want to search your book bag, they shouldn't be doing that to you. Mm. you know, or or they want to grab your cell phone and read your text because they think somebody did something, right? They should not do that. Now, schools, it, school administrators, public school administrators have very, very broad powers to, for search and seizure of students' devices uh, under the auspice of, of uh, 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 you know, uh, campus safety. And the, the Supreme Court ruled on that back in the 70s, and it's been the same ever since, right? And so these guys have broad powers, but it does not mean that they're immune immune uh, from repercussions of an un unlawful search or an unlawful seizure. Hit the button and, you know, at least let's get the evidence. Let's have a record of what happened. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, we'll deal with anything on the back end if you didn't, if you feel like your rights were violated. But again, those family plans down there bundle three accounts or more up to, you know, up to five. And uh, it allows you to protect yourself 
and your family. And it doesn't have to be family, family, family is who you make it. And so if you've got three college roommates and you're not related uh, and whatever, just get, you know, if you want to go in together, go in together, right? We don't care. We just want to get everybody protected. It's not going to ask you, Hey, I need you to submit proof. That this <laughs> no is your, proof. Your cousin. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's we're, not we don't care. We don't care whether it's your cousin or not. <laughs> Powerful protection. Yeah. Powerful yeah. in the palm of your hands, y'all. Powerful, powerful, powerful. <laughs> Brother, I want to talk about what you're doing. You are seeking investors. Oh, my yeah. favorite, my favorite topic. <laughs> I want to, I want to ask, what's the, what's the goal with that? You're seeking investors. How can people invest and why? What's the intent? Can I ask, what's the goal of the funds that you're going to use for these investment purposes? And that's a really good question. And the goal is always the right answer is what, how, how, what do you need that cash for? Right. And so yeah. we did an earlier seed raise where we raised 150,000. Right. And the reason for that cash is we needed additional money to build out the technology. We built this platform from scratch, from the ground up, because there was nothing that we could buy on the shelf that would do what we're doing. Right. It has a mobile app component, administrative back end component and an attorney module. Right. And so no, there's nothing that existed like this. And so we had to build it. The purpose for this raise is so that we can get the word out uh, a major portion of the money that we're raising. And so we're looking at raising a million dollars. Right. And right now we're sitting at around um, three hundred and seventeen thousand after three weeks. And so we've done really well. This is a. A uh, 12 week raise, and after three weeks and a few days, uh, we're already uh, um, uh, almost a third the way there, right? So we're doing really good, but we still need to get across the finish line. But the whole goal here is uh, startups are starved for um, resources, meaning everybody that works for us right now works pretty much every day. We work, I'm like, you know, I pick Sunday because it doesn't, Monday doesn't look any different than a Sunday for me, right? nighttime doesn't look any different than a morning to me. We're all, we're just working like dogs, but happy dogs. Okay. Uh, and so <clears throat> with that in mind, we know that's not sustainable. So we need to bring in additional people to help us through this journey to handle certain functions within the company. We would like to buy more marketing dollars in order to get the word out. We've, we've acquired the 6,000 members that we paid members that we have today based on just word of mouth, social media outreach and our promotion partners. And it hasn't cost us a dime, but we've got to start spending some money on this stuff. And so, you know, those are the primary reasons. Plus it's just a lot of legal uh, we have our own legal cost and our legal isn't free because we use a pretty expensive law firm, but it pays itself back because this is a highly complex business and highly regulated business. And we, could, we can't afford a slip up. We can't afford a mistake. So, you know, if you you have a few dollars, it's not very often that you get to uh, invest in a, a company that's only been in existence for a year and a couple of months, right? Uh, generally, by the time you get to invest in a company, it's already gone through several rounds of raising and all the people who make a lot of money have already made their money and then it IPOs and you can buy it on the stock market or get it through your 401k. Frankly, by then the upside's actually sort of wrung out of the business, if you will, and it just sort of sits there and stagnates for the rest of the time. And unless you're a day, day trader, you're not going to get anything out of it. This is a, a regulation CF or crowdfunding raises. The uh, only mechanism a, a commercial or a retail investor, a, just a regular guy off the street, can invest $100 or more into a business that's a startup, right? And so um, you got to be careful with uh, investing. I don't recommend anybody invest if you can't afford to lose the money because that's how you have to approach invest investing in the first place. If you need that money next week, do not invest it. If you need that money next year, do not invest it. Keep it and pay your bills, buy your freaking food and eggs and whatever. Uh, but if you've got money that's sitting off on the side and you're wondering how to deploy it, and make it work for you, investing is a good way to do that. And so uh, I recommend you look at our page, but also run that by your financial uh, uh, advisors uh, just to make sure you understand what you're doing when you invest, because it's a very serious thing and it, it, it does involve a, a significant level of risk powerful powerful and and and, and th thank you for that um i have to also protect my guests again this is a legal disclaimer this is not financial advice <laughs> but, all right so for those of you watching this is not a financial advice but i also will add my caveat because i have invested 
um, in, in businesses and, and I'm, I'm trying to diversify my portfolio. One thing you want to do when you invest in a company is you want to look at what stage that company is in. So is this company in the development stage where they have a concept, they have um, drafts and graphs and pie charts and everything, but they don't actually have a tangible product. And so that's a, the very beginning stage. And so um, I'm just going to ask publicly, Mr. Walton, is this software available today? Yes. Uh, so we went live with the software April 3rd of 2024. Uh, and since then, we've acquired uh, just over uh, an exit, probably around 6,100 uh, members or so 6,100 members, paid members. Right. Uh, and uh, we probably helped already about 400 people. So when I look at the dashboard here, it shows that we have just over 400 uh, member uh, support requests that we've we've done. And um, a lot of those have, uh, have have been serious situations. We do get some people calling in saying, oh, they're, oh, I hit the button by mistake. I just wanted to see if it worked, right? That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay for, for now. I, I get the curiosity. So we don't, we don't get bent out of shape about that because those calls usually last like, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. But whatever the case, we, we, we have helped uh, quite a few people already. And so we're live. And this is just really a, a means for us to get the word out about this. What I will say, though, is that we have three categories. If I if I if I can explain this, Marcus, yeah. briefly, we have three uh, four primary categories of people that we really are promoting to uh, that that are designed to sort of be a good fit for this. One is sort of the guy who feels patriotic and doesn't like the government. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, telling them what to do every day, and understands that the police sometimes are sort of the uh, the government, sort of local military, in order to enforce those things. And so they're going to want to do everything they can to protect their rights and exert their rights and enjoy their rights. And so those guys generally, when they hear about this, they hop right in, right? Then there's uh, the uh, the young males. Um, and when we say young males, we mean young males uh, below the age of 32. Uh, and generally, it's young males of color, right? Yeah. And um, those are the most at risk. But those are the, also the people who are least proactive. I'm just being honest, right? They're yeah. least proactive. They think they're invincible. They think they don't need any help. You know, I'm the man. I don't need no help, right? Uh, and they're the guys who police target the most because, frankly, the statistics that the police use show that these guys are generally the criminals if anybody's the criminal, right? Uh, you know, young people are engaged in more criminal activity than like 80 year olds, right? Uh, at least the type of criminal nice. activity the police focus on. So my, 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 my advice to that group is think about that. Think about that, that you're the group that resists uh, being proactive about something, but you're also the most at risk. And I'm going to stop there on that one. Then the next group is auto enthusiasts. They spend a lot of time on the road. And so it's sort of a no brainer for those guys, unless, except where those auto enthusiasts overlap with the young males, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is parents. Parents want to protect their kids. Frankly, what we hear from parents is I'm not worried about myself. I just want to know where my kids are if they get stopped. I just want to make sure my kids don't say the wrong thing. I just want to make sure that my kid who's off at college, you know, if something happens, I at least have an idea of where it happened and what's happening and I can do something. Not knowing, a parent not knowing, you know, is one of the biggest challenges of being a parent. And knowing that something happened but not knowing the details, that's the second biggest challenge of a parent. It'll drive you crazy. And so, again, that's why uh, that final group parents have actually those family plans make up over a third of our memberships because we believe that parents really want to protect their young adults and uh, they need protection, frankly, especially the young men. Absolutely. Wow. You, gave me, you gave me so many nuggets with that. Did, 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 can, can, should I hit the button in that instance? I'm on college campus. A college has its own rules and old campus laws. Can, should I still hit the button? With Absolutely. Internet? We've had them hit it on military installations, right? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, I, if anybody is, so campus have campus police. Even public schools have their own resource officers, which are police. So 
if there's a law enforcement, and even if you're in doubt, hit the button, right? You'll get an attorney and the attorney will assess the situation. And if there's not a law enforcement qualifier in there, they're going to tell you, no, you know, if you got a ticket yesterday, the police aren't there anymore. I can't give you advice about how to handle a previous ticket, right? And we get those a lot. So don't think that we're going to be mad at you. We kind of expect sort of the curious, the call and all, but the attorney is going to politely tell you that this doesn't qualify and we want to keep that line open for people who really need it. That's fair. That's fair. Yep. This has been epic, 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 powerful interview. So many nuggets, so many with so much wisdom. I love what I do. y'all. <laughs> I love this, love this, love this. Mr. Walton, you've shared so many nuggets, so many tips. This episode, this is a blockbuster. One of my, one of my by far favorite interviews. Sir, you've given us insight. You've given us wisdom. You've passed on knowledge and legacy and information. But if you had one more trick in the hat, if you had one more nugget to that young man watching this and or that family member or that loved one or that guy that is deciding on buying uh, uh, his, his small arm to protect his family, to keep in his house, what would you say to that man right now? Because if he's just on the fence, he doesn't know if he should invest, buy, get the app. What would you say right now to them watching this? That's a good question. I, I would say whatever you, decisions you choose to make today, whatever you do today or don't do today will affect the rest of your life, uh, it's both big and small. And so sometimes we make light of the small decisions, but those small decisions stack up to be and largely impactful in the future. And so this isn't about attorney shield. This is about if you're in school and you're thinking about dropping out, well, if school is going to help you get to where you want to go, don't drop out, right? That's a choice. You know, if you know, you have a choice of, you know, going to a party on Friday and buying a bunch of liquor or you have the choice of paying your rent, pay your rent. I think in your heart, you know, what's the right approach to make. Be proactive, be smart, uh, think about your future and let that drive the decisions you make. And whether that includes you getting involved with Attorney Shield or not from an investor or a member, that's up to you. But the decisions you make today and what you do and don't do today will affect the rest of your life. I knew it. I knew he had one more in the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> powerful powerful y'all i'm so sorry we are out of time we gotta let this incredible man incredible speaker go he has many more people to help he's available right now active and so whether you're on the investor side the member side do it <laughs> whatever it is do it no matter what it is Sir, I want to say this to you publicly. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving back Absolutely. in this way. Thank you for supporting the show. We love it. We love it. And thank you all for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this was insp insightful, inspirational, motivational, encouraging that we as a people, as a society, and even as a black and brown people, we're heading in the right direction. Amen. So, so make the <laughs> choice. Make the choice. Thank you all for tuning in. Like we end every show, take care of your friends. Take care of your family and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and Mr. David Walton, super fragilistic expiato docious. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>